All right, Nicola, we're here at where the double barrel 1911 or the 2011 A1 slide is made. If you would, quickly run through the process for the folks at home. For sure. This is the most critical part of the gun, of course. We start from a solid bar of 42 chrome molybdenum 6 steel. This is the first phase. The, the, uh, the billet is peeled, rectified outside and cut. Then there is a first machining, squaring, and larger portion of the under the slide is removed. Then go through annealing, first annealing. Again, it is squared, again checked, rectified because of any bend, and a dovetail made here to hook the phase one for the major drilling of holes, drilling of holes, emptying inside, rail creation. All the phase one inside work, the main part, inside working, the mechanical part. And this is the first three phases. Okay, then the end result, you end up with something like this, yes. right? Exactly like this, yes. Got it. Now from here, it goes back, it has to be EDM for the breech face, correct? Yeah. It has to be uh, stress relieved again and uh, checked again and whatever is fine goes on to the second phase which is the back phase. So basically in two takes, everything that makes the gun work the inside is done in one take. So no error from one take to the other. The rest is aesthetical and porting, you know, which is not strictly functional. Okay, good deal. All right, fans, I'm here with Nicola Bandini. We're on the second floor of Arsenal Firearms here in Italy. And this is where the assembly of the AF 2011A1 takes place, correct? Correct. Now, manufacturing is made elsewhere and the parts are brought to here. Yeah. We do not do any metal uh, turning or you know any dust or anything here. As you can see, the, the ambience has really uh, been designed for assembly, you know, state of the art facility, micro dust filtering and controlled atmosphere with temperature and humidity uh, in order to have all the parts dimensionally the same. Once they're stabilized here in our stockhouse, warehouse, you know, they've been checked and quality inspected and accepted, they're all the same throughout the process of assembling of each one firearm. The thing that we were talking about before we started filming was people need to understand that this is like manufacturing a double barrel rifle, the same concept, right? Exactly. And no matter how well engineer the gun is uh, from a principle of a design, but each component has to follow some quality control that are not used, uh, used in a single barrel right. uh, weapon. I'll give you an example. A 1911 single barrel, single slide, if the slide is slightly warped or bent, as long as you make it function on the frame, the barrel will hit ideally not in the same spot as if it was straight, but then they adjust the sights and you have one barrel. But if you have two barrels, and the slide is warped, the, you know, the barrels will hit distant points, so we cannot afford that. We have to guarantee, like ideally, two inches maximum at 10 yards mm -hmm. distance. We start with one inch, okay? We start with the two barrels in the pistol, the muzzle is one inch center to center. Mm -hmm. So we maximum can accept a gain of one, one inch. inch dispersion. Hmm. Interesting, well, if you don't mind, take me and the fans at home through the processes you have on this level Arsenal Farms. With great pleasure for sure. Thank you. All right, let's take a second here if you don't mind and put everything kind of in the context that people at home can understand in terms of making the gun as uniform as possible. So bullets launch down range essentially exactly parallel. Parallel. Now you've got a little demonstration here and a couple mm. targets, correct? Here we have the two firing pins, which is a standard 1911 firing pin, 45. We have to very carefully measure the length of both that go into one pistol. In other words, when the two firing pins are the same, we have an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half group from the two barrels, and we have three inches, almost three inches, when the firing pins are one sheet of paper, one longer than the other. Because like what you're explaining to me, 
projectile from one barrel gets ahead of the other and then the side blast well, can essentially start affecting the other one as it comes out of the muzzle, correct? Exactly. We have to bear in mind that what we have here is we start with about one inch between center and center of the barrel. So we cannot get any better than one inch, of course, if they travel parallel. Here we have an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter, so the, my, the, the deviation between the two barrels, including the ammunition deviation, is only about one quarter, a half inch at 16 yards. Right, 15 meters, which is very acceptable. Very acceptable for two barrels, yeah. You have to, since the ammunition that, that people are going to shoot is kind of beyond your control, you have to do the best you can here exactly. to make sure mechanically all the components are as, as near identical as possible. Exactly. So you've kind of taken that out of the equation. And what we are doing, we are proofing at the proof house each gun with a certificate, and we are also doing a test target sealed and signed with date of each serial number, including it in the box as total proof how the gun shoots with the standard specified ammunition. And the rest is to the owner and user right. and shooter. All right, Nicola, what do we have here? What do we do in this area of the This is uh, uh, final adjusting and uh, refinement of each main part of the gun, like the two barrels, the slide, and the frame. And in order to achieve this result, we have here Walter Pedretti, who is uh, one master finisher of fine shotguns and rifles taken from the Gardonese Valley industry. He was employed in a big name before for many years, and he is the guy who actually made the gun look fantastic inside out and trimmed to performance. You know, so it's not only aesthetics, it's also technical performance. Good deal. Now, how long has somebody like him worked in this valley in the firearms industry? I think uh, 25 years. There aren't many like him, you know, it's uh, really... It's a real prize to have him yeah. in the work. So, once again, you kind of fall back to there's the you know, the double barrel shotgun, double barrel rifle, that's where that comes into play on this particular firearm. Yeah, very, very interesting point of view, yes. First of its kind that I know of, I don't, there might have been some other double barrel pistols made, but certainly the first one I know of that's, that's auto-loading, that's semi-automatic. Yeah, this, this is the first one, yeah, absolutely. On an industrial basis, you know, there have been some uh, cut and weld and uh, one, two pieces uh, right. experiments over the past uh, decades, but certainly this is uh, the sci first scientific industrial experiment of double barrel automatic, semi-automatic pistol. So I guess the next place we're going is the marking station where they actually mark the gun. Exactly, which is previously to the proof house. Let's do it. Okay, we have the laser marking machine here, which is used in the firearms industry, but you guys have a unique way that you guys mark the weapons, correct? Yeah, we're just uh, following our policy of keeping everything in line, you know, one slide, one frame, two barrels. We uh, prepared a special tooling here to mark the gun, uh, assembled gun, completely assembled, except the grips. So we just one side and the other side, all the required markings in one step. So no mistakes of exchanging parts. Right, so it's all the same sheet of music. Exactly. Cool. Okay, because the double barrel 45 is a hand built or hand fitted firearm, not mass production, it's important that the components stay together, right? You guys built your own procedure to do that. Yeah, we designed a special uh, box and um, beach, stabilized beach, in order to have every frame, two barrel, slide from this station. Once they are accepted from manufacturing and accepted quality control, they will never leave this box. Okay. Because, you know, we have proof house in Europe, so they need to go to the proof house. They need to be serialized, proofed, tested in the white by us, adjusted in the white, taken into parts again, go to bluing, go to all the surface finishes. And so they never leave this box. And you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but last two digits of the serial number, you yeah. make sure the barrel and the slot, everything exactly. stays on track. One, two, three, four. Even the magazine, you know, uh, fully interchangeable, you know. Any end user can buy spare part magazine and it will be fully functional. But we just want to make sure, you know, that there is no uncertainty in the process. Good deal.
Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.